Hi, my name's Cresta Cowell and I am the author of the How to Train Your Dragon series. Oh. I've just written book 10, which is called How to Seize a Dragon's Jewel. And in this book, um, things have got very dark for my hero, Hiccup. He has become an outcast. He's all alone um, being hunted through the archipelago by the uh, the dragons of the Dragon Rebellion. A rebellion has started and the dragons are trying to fight all the humans and the humans are fighting back and poor Hiccup is all alone with just his hunting dragon Toothless and his riding dragon, the Windwalker, for company. Um, his father has been made a slave and Hiccup has to rescue his father, find the dragon jewel and try to stop the dragons and the humans exterminating each other. So things are pretty bad at this point, um, at the beginning of this book. Oh, I loved the movie. I absolutely loved the movie. I sometimes feel a little bit guilty saying that because it was different from the books. Um, and so I kind of felt guilty because I think some fans would expect it to be exactly the same. But the thing is, um, uh, books and films are different. And also in, the, in this particular case, I'm writing 12 books and they're not writing, and they're not writing 12 movies because we'll be 120 by the time they finish. They're, they're making three movies. So they had to change the story in some ways in order to collapse it. Um, but they're telling the same story, which is um, you know, both thrilling and funny and exciting and also makes you think. Um, you know, they're telling that same story about you know, what happened to the dragons, where are the dragons now? Um, uh, uh, and, and so they're telling the same story but in a filmic sort of way so I absolutely loved the movie I thought it was and, and, and you can do things in a movie which you can't do in books and the other way around um, so in, in the books you have things like the Dragonese language the language the dragons can speak to one another um, but that wouldn't really mo work in a movie because you'd have to have subtitles um, uh, but in a book it's wonderful and in a movie, you can have all these dragon riding scenes, um, and, and the dragon riding the scenes are, in, in the movie are amazing, um, but that doesn't work as well in a book. So things work uh, well in books that don't um, work in movies and the other way around. So, and I loved the movie. I thought it was, a, it was a wonderful movie, and that's what really mattered to me. And a lot of children come to the books now from the movie as well, um, and also the other way around. So. So, it, so it's worked very well. So I had so many favourite authors when I was a child, it's difficult to fix on just one. Um, but I loved, I loved Tolkien, Lord of the Rings. Um, I loved Diana Wynne-Jones, a huge fan of Diana Wynne-Jones, um, The Ogre Downstairs, Power of Three. I, I loved Ursula Le Guin, who wrote the Wizard of Earthsea series, dragons, wonderful talking dragons that were quite frightening um, in The Wizard of Earth Street. She wasn't frightened. She wasn't scared of being frightening, Ursula Le Guin. Um, I had many, many favourite authors. And I always say to children, if they, if they want to be writers, that's what you should do before anything. I mean, of course, practice writing, but also read as much as you can and as widely as you can. Um, because that teaches you the way that stories can be told. Um, uh, uh, so I had many, many different favourite authors when I was a nice kid. And when I was little, I was writing lots and lots of stories. And indeed, I was writing about Vikings and dragons when I was, I was little. Um, but I think I didn't really know uh, that I could be a writer because I kind of thought it was something that, you know, it was like being a, a, a kind of pop star or something or something like that. It was something that other people did, which is why I love to go out and meet children. Um, because then they can see it's just an ordinary person being a writer. Um, so I would have loved to have known as a kid that that was something that I could be. Um, but I think it wasn't until I was older that I really set my sights on it. I, I went to, um, I read English at university and then went to art school. And that's when I first started writing, writing books and realizing that's what I really, I wanted to tell stories in words and in pictures. Um, I love that character, Emily Brown, actually. She's so feisty. So is, I love that. Is she based on anybody? Yes. She, um, well, <laughs> she is, 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 is slightly based on my niece, Delphina, 
um, who's a very redoubtable little girl. Um, I love Emily Brown because, um, and she's also based on my sister, Emily, who's also called Emily, and also on my daughter, Maisie. The story came out because my daughter, Maisie, had a dog that she wouldn't go to bed without. And um, one day we lost the dog and it was very serious. Um, we couldn't find it anywhere and maybe it was in floods of tears and uh, and she went to bed so sad um, and then the very next day I found the dog in the freezer okay we had looked everywhere but not in the freezer um, and she said oh yes he was looking for the North Pole and so that's what gave me the idea for the story the extraordinary imaginative adventures that children have um, with their uh, 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 their, their, their toys. But what I love about Emily Brown is that she um, she is prepared, she's offered this huge bribe, which is all the toys you, she could ever desire in exchange for Stanley, her rabbit, and she turns it down. And I love that. I love that character who could, you know, stand up and, and turn down that bribe. In the book series, um, We've got one more book of, of dragon species. I'm often asked by children to, for a book of, of, of dragon species. Because um, although I have lots of dragon species in the books, it would be nice to have a, a whole book full of dragon species. So there's, there's that. Um, there's at least one more story in, in the epic, the epic um, series. Um, but I'm not quite sure whether or not there might be two. Um, because we've still got a lot of questions to answer. In this book, we find out you know, what happened to Fishlegs' parents. Um, we answer a lot of the questions that have come up during the series. Um, but I don't know whether I'll have quite room in the last book to answer all the other questions. Um, so there's at least one more book um, in the series, but there might be two if I can't tell the story in one book. Uh, there's still quite a lot for Hiccup to do. He, you know, there's a huge dragon rebellion and the humans are fighting back and Hiccup has to stop the dragons and the humans fighting each other to extinction. Um, so it's quite a big story to be told in just one book.